Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, times and seasons are a divine covenant. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. Exodus 12, verse 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. This was the Passover when Israel was going to leave Egypt. God gave them a covenant, a specific covenant. And he made them cut that covenant upon the first day of the year. The very first day of the year. He said, this will be the first day. It will be the first month of the year to you. Amen. If it is not important, why, okay, why didn't Israel just say, okay, uh, okay, Lord, thank you for that. But uh, we'll wait till April. That will be our first year. <laughs> no, they couldn't do that. Because there was a covenant back in it. There is a power that backs it. And you will notice that when God ordained the feasts, he ordained that they should be done, they should be celebrated on specific days of specific months. There is a divine covenant. There is divine power that is resident in each of these. If we tap into it, we will enjoy the benefits of those seasons. Amen. The dawning of a new month or season or year it's a very a clear divine covenant. It's by a divine covenant. Amen. Just know that whenever a new season dawns, there is a covenant with you, between you and God in that season. Rainy season is coming up. And everybody just go, oh, rainy season. Uh, Nepal will take light always. Oh, for those of us who fly, oh, yes, it is, there will be to be stormy. Oh, you know, thunder strikes planes. They say it strikes planes during that period. It doesn't matter what happens on the natural scape during these new seasons. But when they come, you are different. There's a covenant between you and God. All the negativities which are of darkness must realize that according to the law and the testimony, they cannot just creep in and begin to fulfill some things. We need to learn how to tap into the powers of these covenants. Amen. Every covenant has terms and conditions. So does the seasons and the times. Amen. Every season. Look at Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Can you see that your day, your night, your cold, your heat, summer, winter, seed time, harvest time are given to us by a divine ordinance, by a covenant, a definite covenant of God. Amen. I just wanted us to see that. So every covenant has terms and conditions and we must learn what are these terms and conditions. Amen. Everything God has given to us is for our good. Because when he set up these bodies that are for times and seasons, he said he saw that they were good. Everything God has ordained for you is good. The bad may come to challenge that which is good. But you must draw into the strength and the power of that season to overcome. Amen. Amen. How to harness the powers of a new season? Number one, by offerings. Amen. Let's look at Ezekiel 46 at verse 1. Ezekiel. Thus saith the Lord, the gate of the inner court that looketh towards the east shall be shut and six walking days, sorry, shall be shut the six walking days 
but on the Sabbath it shall be open. And in the day of the new moon, it shall be what? Open. And the priest shall enter by the way of the porch and the gate without. And shall stand by the post of the gate. And the priest shall prepare his burnt offerings and his peace offerings. And he shall worship at the threshold of the gate. Then he shall go forth. But the gate shall not be shut until the evening, the time of darkness. Please. These are some parts of the Bible that are not very popular. How do you harness the powers of a new season? The new moon? The Sabbath? How? The gates to the city is opened only on the Sabbath day. Let's explain that because to us today, who are not bound by the powers of the new moon and days, holy days. We are, what is Sabbath? Sabbath means rest, the divine rest. How does this operate with us today? It is by resting in the word of God. The instrument of faith takes us into divine rest. If God said it, then I am not going to be worried. I am not going to be troubled about it. I will rest in the word of God. I will rest on his promises. We sing a hymn. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, we are standing on the promises of God. When you stand on God's divine promises, it doesn't matter whether everything is sinking. It doesn't matter if the whole of hell decides to break loose. David said, even if I were to go into hell, he would be with me. <laughs> and when God is with you in hell, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that was hell. The fun is he said seven times. And these guys are thrown into it and God was with them. What did that mean to them? Rest. The fire could not touch them. In fact, they began to do some very strange things inside the fire. They were dancing around. They were praising God. <laughs> and God was dancing with them. They had a sound fellowship. That doesn't look like people who were troubled, who were worried about the fire. No, they were not. They were, as a matter of fact, enjoying themselves. I mean, if you were, if I was in their shoes, to be frank with you, I would have been secretly asking, Lord, let this thing last longer a little bit. <laughs> Let's stay here. Let's enjoy this place. And do you know, that converted the king. It, it beat him. He didn't know what to think of it. He made a decree that only the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego should be, you know, reverence should be worshipped. Even though he himself was a hidden king. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We can tap into the powers of a new season by bringing offerings. The first offering that was mentioned is the whole burnt offering. When a new season is dawning, it is time to bring the whole burnt offering. What does it mean? It means a life that is rededicated to God completely. A life with no aspect of it reserved unto yourself or to anything, any other than God. It's every new season is a time to sit down and rededicate your life. Take inventory. Drop the things that do not glorify God. Amen. Do away with them. Look, you were in my life. I don't want you in this new season. You were there. And it is not according to the law and the testimony. You do not belong to my season. It's a time to take inventory of our lives. Repent where we need to repent. Restitute where we need to restitute. Amen. Confess where we need to confess. 
correct our ways where we need to. Whenever a new season dawns and you come, giving yourself over afresh unto the Lord, you are tapping into the powers of that season. Because God will not but release what should come to you in that season when he sees your offering. Amen. The next offering that was mentioned in Ezekiel 46 is the peace offering. The peace offering is very, very crucial. This is a fellowship offering. Let me break it down. The peace offering is in two parts. Number one, nothing is standing between you and God. At every point in time, you do not have any knowledge of an unconfessed sin or a weakness that you have not acknowledged before God. And then number two, you do not have any enemy in the house or outside the house. Somebody did something to someone. Don't want to mention their names. And uh, she was so angry. I said, forgive them now. She said, okay, I'll forgive. I said, not you will. I want you to forgive them right away. Say, so, okay, I have forgiven. I said, okay. I knew in my heart that uh, she had not forgiven. So I said, uh, sis, call them. Ah, I said, no, I won't call them. I said, call them. He said, I won't call them. They should call me. I said, okay, that's very nice. But I want you to give me a sign that you have forgiven them. These are children. You cannot, how can you <laughs> be keeping enmity with children? I said, no, call them. Pick up your phone, call them. I said, okay. If I say so, I said, yeah, I say so. It's very important. <laughs> it's very important. You really have not forgiven if what was done to you becomes a basis of relating with that person. The truth, overall truth, is that you have not forgiven. I know Nigeria is very nasty today. Somebody can hurt you and, oh, forgive me, forgive me. You forgive them. You accept them back and they do it again. I am aware. They did it to the Lord. You understand? They did it to the Lord. But did the Lord, you know, do any bad thing to any of them? No. Judas Iscariot was stealing from the purse, the fellowship purse, and the Lord knew it. He did not strip him. Or if I was the one who removed the purse from him immediately, yes, yeah, because he'll finish the money. And then we have people who have needs, and uh, one man is there chopping the money, stealing it, and he's not even owning up. The Lord knew everything. Anytime I think about the level of information the Lord had, and yet he related with us, honestly, I am humbled. He didn't, the only thing was that that was going to destroy Judas Iscariot. He never did repent until it was too late. I mean, he stole to the point where he felt, oh, wait a minute. I have just been taking money from the purse. I said, but if I sell this man, I will make more money. So let's just say, but they can't even take him anyway. How many times have they come to try to catch him? He will either vanish or he walks through the midst of them or he won't show up when they are looking for him. They, they, they can't even take him. I chop their money. He's been eating fellowship money. He now wanted to <laughs> rip off people. In new, can you imagine the ripping of the priesthood of that day? Collect the money. I know they won't be able to catch him, but if they come and say we couldn't catch him, so well, deal a deal is a deal. You couldn't catch him, that's your fault, not mine. I, I showed him to you, I even kissed him. If you couldn't take him, so that's your own. As for the money, uh, we we'll forget it. Let's strike another deal. The man became extremely wicked. And this time around, the Lord did not escape. The Lord refused to escape. And he realized that uh, he had been foolish. He tried to refund the money, but it was too late. 
He went and hung himself. I hope that atoned for him. Amen. Uh -huh. Because <laughs> I know many of us uh, preachers, some have judged and concluded that Judas is in hell. Others said, no, he was doing the will of God, he's in heaven. I, Richard, in your heart, do not know where he is. <laughs> uh, only God knows where he is. You understand? <laughs> but it is clear what he did on earth. We can analyze it. We can see what he did. So, we must have peace offering. Never have anyone that you are keeping an enmity with. If somebody offends you, it does not take anything to forgive. You lose nothing. You lose nothing. If it is money they took from you and they didn't return it, is it the money, that money that has been feeding you all along? You have been eating well. You've paid your children's school fees. You've done projects. That money was not there. Why should it become such a big concern to you? Your prayer for him or her is that he doesn't continue in that path until it is too late. I won't place a curse on him because I won't be responsible. I'm only out to save souls, not to be responsible for the destruction of any. Blessed be the name of the Lamb of God. The peace offering. When you can bring peace offering, you can tap into the powers of a new season. Jesus said, and when you start praying, what did you do? Forgive. Forgive. One of the conditions for answered prayers, one of the conditions for tapping into the power of God to intervene in your situation is forgiving those that have offended you. And it is the same principle. When you are tapping into the powers of a new season, you need to look at, take inventory. If anybody has offended you, forgive. When you do, you are tapping into the covenant power of God that is meant to organize and rule in that season. And you join the ruling class of that season. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It comes, the next thing is vows. David would make a vow unto God. If you would do this for me, I will give you that. What do you think is this? tapping into power? Is hooking on to power? Lord, do this for me. I am going to give you this. Uh, what is the name of this man who pledged anything that comes out of my house? If you give me this Jephthah, Jephthah in, in uh, Judges. Lord, I'm not qualified to fight this thing. This battle is enormous. But if you give me victory and I return, anything that comes out of my house first will be a sacrifice to you. And he didn't bargain for what came out of his house <laughs> first. It was his only daughter. What did Jephthah do? He tapped into the power of God in the season of warfare. And he won the victory, hands down. One man went out with a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call them now? People. Yes. Miscreants. Gathered them together and they took a nation. Why? Because one man learned how to tap into the powers of a season. Blessed be the name of the Lamb of God. Vows. We, somebody said that belongs to the Old Testament. No, it doesn't. There are principles for living. There are principles for living. You can tell God, I am going to give you this if you will do this, this, and that for me. And when you strike an ag agreement with God, it becomes a covenant. God will always keep his part. And he wants you to keep your own side. David said, pay thy vows. Amen. Number three, way to harness the power of a new season is celebration of given ordinances. There are certain ordinances that God gave. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Certain ordinances are given by God to tap into the powers of a new season. For example, breaking of bread, as simple as it is. Breaking of bread in the church. People have tried to make it as ordinary as possible. Okay? There's nothing ordinary about breaking of bread. Please take note. You can go and study it by yourself. I know there are different, diverse views on it. But let us look at it first of all. If you want to tap into resurrection power, you must first of all experience the broken body of Christ. So is healing. This is how breaking of bread brings healing. Paul said that people are not celebrating the breaking of bread, you know, in an orderly manner. And because of that, some are sick, some are weak, both spiritually and physically, and some even die. So if you discern the body and break the bread properly, it should bring healing. It should bring recovery. And it should bring life. Amen. We had the breaking of bread in Abuja. And I shared on this. A sister who had an accident and has been having a stiff knee decided to tap into it. <laughs> when it happened, she said she was first of all afraid to come and share the testimony because if she shares it, they would think she's weird. It was when I shared other experiences with her, you know, that uh, she said, then I'm going to share. She now came and shared it publicly in fellowship. Now, take note of this. We broke bread. She said, Lord, your broken body makes for my healing. Because the word stripes means wounds. It is with the stripes we are healed, isn't it? It is the wounds from the broken body of Christ, the lacerated back, the piercing of his hands. Oh, everywhere his flesh was opened up, a wound. While that was being done by a divine covenant, God was taking away our sicknesses and our diseases. She tapped into that. She went to sleep that night. She was lying down with her husband beside her. And then all of a sudden, she heard a huge noise on her knee. It was a twist. Boom. Oh, she thought it was going to be painful, but it was not painful. She tapped her husband. She said, see you. I just heard a noise on my knee. And when she moved the knee, she saw a reptile. Right there. A reptile. made This many-colored kind of snake. Many colors, short. So apparently when it need turn, let me tell you what would have happened. First of all, that has been there as a spirit thing, a spiritual thing. When it became physical and came out, she felt it on the bed. This is no story. This is no movie. This is what happened in Abuja. It's a Fumi Olumide. She shared this testimony either about two Sundays ago that she came and shared this testimony I'm sharing with you. Like that, and a many-colored reptile on the bed, dead. Now, somebody might say, what is the rationale? If brother, I don't know if brother really can remember when we were in Mureton. The lady we ministered to, that lady was saying, all the demons in Mureton have died. <laughs> she, we ministered to her. She went home. She lay down on the bed and woke up with pieces of glass. Glass. She brought some of us for us to see. No glass. She, it was not glass of a mirror. She didn't slide down on her bed, her bag. So you can say that the mirror broke. And besides, the bed she was sleeping on had all kinds of pieces of glass on it. And what happened? Why did we minister to her? Things were running around in her body. She couldn't, she was in pain. Things would be moving from head to toe, back to the head, moving all around her body. After ministration, everything became glass. But let me look at science. Those of us who did chemistry, you will notice that the heavier elements were, are made from the lesser ones. They may be gaseous, but with time, under certain reactions, they become solid. 
So things like stone, silicon, and all of these heavier elements existed as gases, like neutrons. Even in nature, that happens. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I am not surprised at all. So in ministry, I expect practically anything to happen. (laughs) Because you never know what God wants. If in nature, lighter elements can become heavy ones. Why should the spiritual thing not turn physical? It came out. From breaking of bread. Beloved brethren, there are some of the breaking of... Paul said, this is not to come and eat. So if you want to eat, eat at home. We are not coming here for feast. And then you eat. Some people are drunk and some are having heavy... He said, that's not it. This is a ceremony. The small piece of bread you are going to take and the small cup of wine you are going to take won't fill your stomach. But spiritually, because it fulfills a covenant, it is an ordinance ordained by God to tap into healing power and into the life of God himself. Glory to God. 